let's move on to solving the mathematical model and that we do under the solution uh, in the tree. Highlight solution methods. And there are, you know, a bunch of knobs you can twiddle here. We will leave them all at defaults for now. But an important thing to note here is that the discretization um, for pressure as well as momentum is second order accurate. So we have a second order accurate discretization scheme. And as we refine the mesh, we expect the, um, the error to go down as the square of the, you know, the mesh spacing. Again, there are a bunch of knobs I can twiddle under solution controls. I won't do that and highlight monitors and under residuals say edit. This is where we set the tolerances for the aggregate mass and momentum imbalances. That is, you know, we control until when the solver will iterate. And we talked about this in the big ideas in CFD. So let me go back to that particular PowerPoint. So this tolerance is for the aggregate mass imbalance here, but similarly for the momentum imbalance. So that's what we are setting in that particular menu. The default tolerance is set to 10 to the power of minus three. And in my experience, you know, I've come across problems where that has not given me even qualitatively the right result. So I like the, the aggregate mass and momentum imbalances to drop to 10 to the power of minus six. So let me change that to 10 to the power of minus six. And in the exercises, I will have you explore what is the effect of you know, setting the residuals at just 10 to the power of minus three versus uh, 10 to the power of minus six. Come down to solution initialization. So this is where we initialize the um, the guess values for all the at all the cell centers, and again, you know, we talked about this in the big ideas in CFD. So if I go back to that PowerPoint, we, the algorithm starts by assigning guess values at the cell centers. That's essentially what we're doing here. I'll go to standard initialization. So under solution initialization, standard initialization. I'll initialize all the cell center values for pressure, the gauge pressure to be zero, the axial velocity to be one, and the radial velocity to be zero. And I'll say initialize. And you know that's a very simple initialization. And I can check what that did um, by going to the graphics, uh, you know, under results graphics, go to contours. I can double click on contours and I will select contours of velocity, axial velocity. Make sure none of the surfaces here are selected and say display. And if I zoom in here, Let me fill the domain with colors corresponding to the axial velocity. So I'll pick filled and say display. Um, and let me turn on the mesh. So I'll say draw mesh. Make sure everything's selected. So I'll click on that. All surfaces are selected. Say display, close, and then display again. Let's try to understand what this is saying. Um, and for that, in fact, I'll zoom in a little bit more. So these cells are colored by, um, you know, are red. So the, the value is one, but over here it goes from red to blue. So it goes from red from one to zero. And that's showing me the nodal values. Um, so what, what it's showing me is, you know, so the nodal values, in fact, I will, let me annotate that. So that's a nodal value, and that's calculated by interpolating the cell center values. Okay, and all the cell center values are one, so that's one. 
this value is zero from the boundary condition. Okay, so as I'm going along here, it's going from one to zero, and that's what is shown by these colors. But really what I want to see are not the nodal values. I want to see the cell center values. So what I'll do is I will deselect node values and say display. Now it's coloring you know, each cell by the corresponding value of the axial velocity at the center of the cell and you see all that is set to one. And similarly, you can check that the you know, gauge pressure is set to zero and so on. So that's the effect of the solution initialization. I close out of here and now I am set up for beginning the iterations.